what we're using to convert from copper to PEX is a shark bite connector. And this is what I was mentioning, it's like a Chinese finger puzzle. So the more pressure is on, you know, instilled in this connection, the stronger it holds. Now we can generally just stick it right on the copper and shove it down and create the connection. But before you do, you want to take some sand cloth and clean your fist just to make sure that you don't have any burrs. Because, or, or any solder bumps like this. If you don't have a nice smooth connection, it will leak. You just set it on there and then you just give it a push. Now that's locked in place. And I set it on, nice little twist, and a push. Locked in place. Now we're gonna take our pecs. We just want a rough measure up to where our pecs gonna go. We set that in there and push. A bit of a twist, push. Now, most fittings are locked in place. They're not ever gonna come off. This is the claim. So today we're gonna find out if it's true. Basically what we have here is there's water intake that are designed for pecs. That reduces the amount of work that we have to do. And then there's two outs. One is for the tub and one goes to the shower head. It'll work with a physical diverter on the outside on the shower tub. Typical thing, you pull the trigger, stops the water, backs up, comes out the shower head. So this is kind of the system we're gonna use. So what we do is we use this wonderful plumber's paste and we put it on the threads. So in order to prep for our, our valve, we need Teflon tape. We're gonna do a few runs on the threads. So basically when it comes to plumbing, there's outside diameter and inside diameter of the pipes. And what we're dealing with is all half inch outside diameter. And the reason that's important is because when you go shopping, there'll be different sizes, half inch, three quarter. And so when you're dealing with most water supply, the copper pipes in the house are half inch. If it's all modern, it's still half inch, but it'll be in plastic piping. If you go to three quarter supply, traditionally that is a much larger volume of water. Sometimes people use that on the hot water going to their, their tub if they have a large volume they wanna fill. But traditionally, half inch is all you get. So we're gonna put this on here. We'll just hand tighten these and then we'll get the wrench out and then we'll finish that off. Now traditionally, it's not really necessary to use Teflon and plumber's paste. A lot of guys will just use, you know, just the Teflon or just the paste. But, since it doesn't hurt, ugh, I use both. Unfortunately, there's a lot of products manufactured overseas nowadays. And I don't, you find, in my experience doing warranty work, that a lot of times there's not really a problem with anything except for the fact that it's just not manufactured up to snuff. And nowadays, manufacturers don't seem to worry about quality control coming off the assembly line. They just replace something when it doesn't work. So with that in mind, a little overkill on making sure your compression fittings are nice and secure is probably a good idea because the net effect of something not working is a flood destroying your ceiling, possibly your flooring, and all they're gonna do is give you a brand new free 79 cent fixture. <laughs> Who cares about the 79 cents? Traditionally on the back, it'll have markings. It'll have cold, hot, up and down, and that tells you which way to install it. Pretty simple. So we mark the center line on the wall. You place your fixture against your two by four and use a couple of short screws, mount it. Now this product here is the Sherlock rings. Blah, 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 blah. They're half inch rings, which is half inch diameter, the outside of the pipe, which is the same as the copper, as the plastic. These rings, as we take them, we just slide it over the pipe and we place them on our fixture. The 
And we put this ring within a quarter inch of the end. That way we're clamping down on one of the rings on the brass, okay? We want to have pressure in between these rings and that's where you get your fit. So we just simply push this on, crimp them together. This takes a little bit of force. Make sure you close the tool entirely. And then from there, all we do is we cut back our water supply where we want it. Put on the other rings, slide them over the top. Take our elbow. As you can see, the advantages to all of this are really quite obvious. It's rather quick. And when I'm done crimping this together, we're finished with the water supply. We can test it right away. So the tools that we're using here don't require a whole lot of skill. Just a couple of simple crimps. The average homeowner can do this without any difficulty. A cutting tool for the pipe, a decent ability to measure, and you've got modern plumbing. A downside is, is you have to rely on your ability to crimp this to the exact depth that it holds the water pressure back and not too close and not too far away that you get a proper seal. And by the looks of it, there is room for manufacturer defect that the, if the crimp ring doesn't grab properly, it could break loose. So we'll have to wait until we do a water test to find out if it all holds together. 14, 7, 8. Mark my center. The next step here is to install our tub spout. And it operates just the same concept as the other. We want to just take our packs, measure the depth of it, take our PEX cutting tool, Turn as you cut, so you don't crush the pipe. Put your ring on each end first. Oh. Slide one on. Now for the shower head extension, we're going to put the ring on. We're going to attach what we call a drop ear. I don't know the story behind why it's called a drop ear. I'm sure it's fascinating. <laughs> it is definitely a, it's basically just a, a threaded brass fixture with built in mounting ports here to put the screws in. Set up the height that we want. Measure here with our eyes. Cut the tube. Put on the ring, stick it on there, just for our quarter inch gap here. Crimp. 14 and 7 eighths. Center line. So as you can see, we have a brand new shower valve with a tub spout and a shower head spout. All plastic pipes, crimp rings, brass fittings, shark bite connection. And this has enabled us to convert from an old system to a brand new system without the use of any torch or soldering or any special skills. No need to hire a licensed plumber. And we're good to go. The advantage of this system is that it's safe. It holds the water back and anybody can do this. 
So in the end, I give Sharp SharkBite an A plus for home users. The only downside is the cost. Um, if you're gonna use this on a regular basis, you might wanna learn how to do traditional plumbing with a torch. But if you're doing a home renovation or a simple upgrade, the $10 of fitting is worth the money because $10, $20, and I can switch over to plastic plumbing, and I don't need to hire a plumber. I did it in about 20 minutes. Fantastic.